Good morning. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God, our Heavenly Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God, which we are going to be meditating and studying this morning, comes from Psalm chapter 143, a Psalm of David. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. Do not bring your servant into judgment, for no one living is righteous before you. The enemy pursues me. He crushes me to the ground. He makes me dwell in the darkness like those long dead. So my spirit grows faint within me. My heart within me is dismayed. I remember the days of long ago. I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. I spread out my hands to you. I thirst for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I will be like those who go down to the pit. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. Rescue me from my enemies, Lord, for I hide myself in you. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. For your name's sake, Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. In your unfailing love, silence my enemies. Destroy all my foes, for I am your servant. This is the word of our Lord. When you hear the word relentless, there are two ways you can understand it, either in a positive light or in a negative one. On the positive side, the adjective might be used to describe the determination of a CEO in his pursuit to to grow his company. On the negative side, the adjective might be used to describe the wind as it blows fiercely and causes damage to homes and to buildings. If you ask David what came to his mind when he heard the word relentless, he might have immediately jumped to a negative understanding of the word. Early in his life, David was constantly running from King Saul, who wanted to kill him. Even though David had done nothing wrong, Saul pursued him relentlessly. David would find shelter in one place, and soon after, Saul and his army would show up. David fled to a foreign country, but the people sent word to Saul that David was hiding there. David's enemy relentlessly chased after him. The side effects of David's constant fleeing led him to exhaustion. He writes in verses 3 and 4, The enemy pursues me. He crushes me to the ground. He makes me dwell in the darkness like those long dead. So my spirit grows faint within me. My heart within me is dismayed. David was wearing out because of the constant threat on his life. But Saul wasn't the only thing weighing on David's mind. He also writes in verse 7, Answer me quickly, Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I will be like those who go down to the pit. David's sinfulness also chased him relentlessly and caused him great anxiety. The same is true for us. Our enemy, the devil, chases us relentlessly to wear us down until we throw up our hands in defeat. The way he attacks each of us looks different, but the result is the same. He wants you to lose your faith. For some of you, the devil relentlessly reminds you of your past sins, the ones that you don't want others to know about, the ones that could ruin your reputation. For others of you, The devil relentlessly has you look at all the good things you've been able to accomplish. He pushes you to take credit, to be proud of yourself, to not think of your success as something God has blessed you with, but something you've earned on your own. Others are bombarded relentlessly with trials in this life. You finally manage to tame one of them, and another one springs up. You get beat down by the relentless struggle. You begin to wonder if God is really in control. The struggle is relentless because sin permeates everything in our world. And when things are going badly, our reaction can be two ways. 
We can either turn to our God or we can turn away from him. The devil works relentlessly to get us to turn away from our God, to forsake his love. However, David offers us a different solution to the relentless struggle. And that is to relentlessly rely on God for strength. David was familiar with the side effects of not relentlessly pursuing God and his love. In fact, he writes about it in Psalm 32 when he recalls what happened when he didn't seek God. He writes, When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. When David felt the weight of his guilt, he should have turned to the Lord for comfort, but he didn't. His guilt ate away at him and caused him to groan day and night. Have you ever felt like that? You had a spat with your spouse and you both went to bed angry? How did that make you feel? It eats away at you, doesn't it? Or when you get into a heated discussion with a family member over text message and you decide to just quit responding, does it make the situation any better? When we don't turn to God in the midst of our struggles, our situation doesn't get better, but it eats away at us. When life gets messy, and it undoubtedly will because we're all sinners living in a sin-filled world, relentlessly turn to God for strength and comfort. Don't see God as the fire extinguisher you only pull out in an emergency. Rather, turn to God daily and be filled with his love. As David is praying in the psalm, he asks the Lord for help in his relentless pursuit of his loving God. Look at the verbs David uses as he pleads with God. He he says, answer me quickly. Bring me word of your unfailing love. Show me the way I should go. Rescue me. Teach me. David brings his request to God because he knows God's track record. Earlier in the psalm, David meditates on what God had done in the past. He had rescued his people from death so many times. He was faithful to his people. He had shown them love. And this was because God made a covenant with them, that they would be his chosen people and he would be their God. They had a close relationship together. Brothers and sisters, we too have the opportunity to relentlessly chase after our God. In fact, that's what he wants us to do. God sent his son to relentlessly fight temptation and to do it perfectly. He sent his son to die in our place so that he could renew his relationship with us. He relentlessly sought after you. He provided people in your life to connect you to his means of grace through the word and the sacraments. God has relentlessly forgiven us all of our sins, and he continues to relentlessly show us his love. When you hear the word relentless, do you understand it in a positive or negative sense? I encourage you not to dwell on the struggle and how it feels as if there is no end to it. But instead, think about God's relentless love for you. Take heart, dear Christians, because this struggle will be over one day and we will enjoy eternal peace and happiness with God. So until that day arrives, relentlessly turn to God for strength. Learn what he has to teach you in his word and be confident that God will get you through the struggle and bring you into your heavenly home. Amen. May this peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, continue to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.